everybody, this is Jeff Janess, and welcome to our fourth lab exercise on raster analysis. Here we're going to see how to generate several types of curvature rasters from a DEM using the Surface Parameters tool. In particular, we're going to generate a profile curvature, which tells us whether water would speed up or slow down as it flows over a cell. Plan curvature, which tells us whether water would be converging or diverging as it flows over a cell. And mean curvature, which tells us the general convexity or concavity of the landscape and could be a good predictor of exposure or protection in a cell. And as with all topographic data sets, we generate curvature rasters from a DEM, or a digital elevation model. We can then use these curvature rasters to identify areas within some curvature threshold. We can also calculate general statistics describing curvature within some region. And take a look at the third lecture video in this module for a more thorough discussion of curvature. Now in this demonstration I'm going to be using ArcGIS Pro version 3.3.2. And for those of you taking my classes at Northern Arizona University, you will use these curvature rasters later for your homework, so don't delete them right away. Okay, before we start, there's a few things you should always consider when calculating curvature. First, which tool are you going to use? Currently, ArcGIS Pro has two tools that calculate curvature. They have the Curvature tool and the Surface Parameters tool. And depending on which tool you use, you must consider different issues. If you're using the Curvature tool, then you must use a projected DEM. As of October 2024, the original Curvature tool has no option for using geodesic methods, so your curvature values will not be correct if you're using a geographic DEM. Setting a z-factor will not fix this problem. If you'd like to know more about issues with failing to use geodesic methods on geographic rasters, then take a look at the fourth lecture video in this module at this link here. Now, if you're using the Surface Parameters tool, on the other hand, you don't need to worry about the coordinate system. The Surface Parameters tool will automatically use geodesic methods regardless of what coordinate system your DEM is in. Next, are your DEM elevation units the same as your XY coordinate system units? And if they're different, say if your elevation units are feet and your coordinate system is in meters, well, then you'll need to specify a conversion factor in the Z factor box if you're using the curvature tool, or else you'll need to specify the actual elevation units in the surface parameters tool. And actually, the surface parameters tool will only ask you for this if the elevation units aren't explicitly identified in the DEM coordinate system. Now, knowing the correct units is really important for curvature, because if ArcGIS thinks your elevation units are in meters when they're really in feet, well, then you're going to end up with greatly exaggerated curvature values, or if the reverse is true, you'll end up with badly underestimated curvature. And in either case, you'll end up with a badly mistaken idea of how curved and bent your landscape is. And speaking of elevation units, both of these tools check to see if your DEM has the elevation unit specified in the coordinate system. They warn you if it doesn't. And it gives you this message about vertical elevation units. And I have a discussion of this issue in a separate video if you want to know more about it. And there's a few more issues with the different versions of the tool. First, the original curvature tool and the surface parameters tool calculate profile curvature very different to each other, such that the curvature tool, the original one, produces positive profile curvature values in concave areas, meaning where water would slow down as it's flowing. Now, the newer surface parameters tool produces positive profile values in convex areas where water would speed up. Okay, second, the original curvature tool multiplies the final curvature values by 100, while the surface parameters tool does not. Third, the surface parameters tool calculates true profile and plan curvature, while the curvature tool only approximates these values. And finally, the surface parameters tool offers several additional types of curvature that the curvature tool does not. Okay, let's get started. First thing, the curvature tools are available in a few extensions in ArcGIS Pro. We're going to use the Spatial Analyst extension. So first, we've got to make sure that extension is turned on. Go to the Project, come down to Licensing, and just check in this list to see if your installation of Spatial Analyst is turned on. For me, it is, so I'm good to go. But if it's not turned on for you, then you'll need to hit Configure Your Licensing Options and turn it on. Okay, so let's start working on this. Um, now, by all indications, Esri is leaving the original curvature tool behind in favor of this newer surface parameters tool. So we're going to use the surface parameters tool rather than the curvature tool for this exercise. 
Okay, the first thing we want to do is add our data. We're going to add this 10 meter DEM, and we're just going to add this semester D unit. They are located in the class data folder in the folder called raster functions. So we're going to hit 10 meter DEM, select the semester D unit as well. We're going to add it to our map. I've got a map named curvature ready to go, so I'm just going to add it to that. Next up, we're going to open up the Surface Parameters tool. We come to the Analysis tab, hit Tools, just search for Surface Parameters. Here it is. We're going to use the Spatial Analyst version of it. Okay, let's just drag our DEM into the tool. Now we're going to calculate three types of curvature in this lab. So we're going to start with mean curvature. So we just change the output raster name to mean curvature. Change the parameter type here to mean curvature. We're going to leave the surface type as quadratic. We're going to leave the neighborhood size the same. We're not going to use an adaptive neighborhood. Now, I happen to know that my DEM is in meters, so the Z unit is in meters. So we're just going to leave that as is. We're going to hit Run. Okay, so next up is profile curvature. So let's uh, calculate that. We're just going to change the output name here to profile. Change the parameter type to profile normal slope line curvature. Hit run. Okay, there we go. And the last curvature is plan curvature. Remember, this is the curvature of a contour line. Let's change this to plan. Change the output type to plan here, the name. Hit run. Okay, so now we have our three types of curvature generated. So next up, I'd like you to take a look at these curvatures, and I'd like you to look at it with the hill shade underneath. We just calculated the hill shade in the previous lab. So I'm going to go to, to uh, our database here that we've been generating stuff. I'm going to add the hill shade to our map. And so just take a look at the hill shade and look at the shape of the land in that hill shade and then take a look at the curvature values and see how they look on different features that you see. So for example, if we zoom in on this little drainage system here, we can see how the plan curvature sort of identifies the drainage bottom in there. The profile curvature, just switch back and forth here, really captures the edges where it starts to slant off and then the slope gets gent gentler down at the bottom. And just uh, take a look at these things and kind of get a feel for what curvature is really telling you. Okay, I think that'll do it for this lab exercise. In our next exercise, we're going to look at something a little more complicated, the topographic position index. Pretty cool stuff. Hope to see you there. Thanks so much, everybody. Take care and bye-bye.